One thing that you might have learned in high school is that the aim of literary or film analysis is to decode the text, to find a deeper meaning that isn't there on the surface. Cultural critic and philosopher Susan Sontag would probably disagree. She wrote a famous essay called Against Interpretation in 1964, in which she argued against the interpretation of artworks. More specifically, she argued against a certain kind of interpretation, one that we might call interpretation as translation. Let's take a look at how she describes this. She writes, quote, By interpretation, I mean here a conscious act of the mind which illustrates a certain code, certain rules of interpretation. Directed to art, interpretation means plucking a set of elements, the X, the Y, the Z, and so forth, from the whole work. The task of interpretation is virtually one of translation. The interpreter says, look, don't you see that X is really or really means A, that Y is really B, that Z is really C? So what does she mean here? Well, think about the days of writing papers in high school English class. How many times have you written this phrase? This concrete thing in the novel symbolizes some abstract concept. The green light in The Great Gatsby symbolizes or stands in for the American dream. The skull in Hamlet symbolizes or stands in for the inevitability of death. The language of symbolism is a perfect example of what Sontag is talking about. When we say the green light symbolizes the American dream, we're translating one thing into another. We're saying that the green light is indeed a green light, but it really means something else. These interpretations seem pretty safe, as we have many logical reasons in the texts to provide evidence for these interpretations. But sometimes we can take this habit of translation too far, or employ it too often. Color is a great example. Think of how often we might be tempted to ascribe colors certain meanings in films and novels. For instance, red always means passion. Green always means envy. The desire to ascribe individual colors certain meanings, I think, comes from what Susan Sontag identifies as a habit of interpreting as a kind of translation of one thing into another. The problem with such interpretations is that, at their worst, they ignore the text itself, pulling these meanings from some imaginary dictionary of traditional symbolism. But even at their best, such interpretations treat artworks as bundles of individual elements ready for translation. For Sontag, this hampers our ability to engage on a sensory level with the artwork. Let me explain what I mean with an example. Take this sequence of Danny riding through the Overlook Hotel in Stanley Kubrick's horror film, The Shining. What if we were asked to provide an analysis of the sequence and simply fixated on the choice of color for Danny's sweater? It's redness signifying passion or danger or love or blood. Or what if we simply took the fact of Danny riding through the hotel as being a metaphor for a kind of journey through life, from childhood to adolescence? For Sontag, the problem with these kinds of interpretation is that they obscure our access to our sensory experience of this sequence, how it's put together rather than what it means. In Sontag's words, we must learn to see more, to hear more, to feel more, the function of criticism should be to show how it is what it is, even that it is what it is, rather than to show what it means. So what if we didn't break the sequence into these individual elements to be translated into meaning, but focused instead on how it produces a certain feeling? This time, instead of leaping to symbolism or metaphor, let's look and listen closely and pay attention to how the sequence makes us feel.
One feeling I imagine a lot of us get when we watch Danny riding his big wheel is creepiness. By definition, creepiness is a subtle feeling of unease or fear. So it's often difficult to describe the cause of it. But that's precisely what Sontag would want us to do, to describe how it is what it is rather than what it means. So let's give it a try. I might begin by describing how the camera stays low to the ground, emphasizing Danny's smallness and isolation amidst the vast empty space of the hotel. Seeing a hotel completely empty might indeed be creepy on its own, but these choices amplify that emptiness. The sense of isolation and emptiness is also reinforced by the sound. The fact that we can hear the oscillation between the sounds of the rug and hardwood floor makes Danny seem all the more alone. I also might describe how the placement of the camera behind Danny prevents us from seeing his facial expression, thus making us unsure as to whether his ride is a kind of childlike play or whether it's more of a trance-like ritual. And finally, I describe the way the camera moves, especially the way that it seems to waver in its pursuit of Danny. Notice here how the camera seems to trail too far from Danny and then immediately tries to close the gap. This almost makes it seem as if the camera is not a neutral viewpoint, but is itself a kind of being, a ghost-like presence that hovers behind Danny. Of course, none of this tells us the meaning of the sequence, what it really means. And there's no shortage of theories about what The Shining really means. There's even a popular documentary film about them, in which we listen to a series of increasingly far-fetched interpretations that claim that the film is really about the massacre of Native American peoples, or really about the Holocaust, or really a confession about Kubrick's participation in the hoaxed moon landing. Even if these theories seem pretty far-fetched, they still conform to the logic of interpretation as translation which still pervades the litany of YouTube analyses of the film. The rhetoric of these videos reinforces the idea that meaning is something that's hidden and needs to be revealed. In Sontag's words, the modern style of interpretation excavates, and as it excavates, destroys. It digs behind the text to find a subtext which is the true one. Following Sontag's warning, maybe the analysis of films shouldn't be understood in terms of revealing the hidden messages contained within them. Maybe there's value in treating an artwork not as a code to be broken, but as something to be experienced. 